and welcome back to my channel. In today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Studio Series Transformers Bumblebee Voyager Class Optimus Prime. Probably the best Optimus Prime to be released by the Studio Series so far. I've also got the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Rampage, so expect a review of him fairly shortly after this review goes out. As always, I'm going to be showcasing a quick look at the packaging, and then I'll take an extremely detailed look at the figure himself. Taking a quick look at the packaging, we've got a fantastic piece of artwork which is based on Optimus's appearance from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. As you can see here, he's in a very iconic pose, which we've seen the first trilogy Optimus in, and it looks fantastic. Studio series, Optimus Prime, Transformers Bumblebee. Here's figure number 38 in this series. Turning the packaging around, we have a larger image of the same image that we saw on the front of the box, looking really awesome. Turning the packaging around, as you can see, we have the figure in both the robot mode, the vehicle mode, states that he transforms in 35 steps, as well as that his wave mate is Voyager class Rampage. He also comes with a brief bio, however, in order to prevent for spoilers, Hasbro and Takara have decided to base it upon the actual bridge that this figure comes with as a backdrop. So it states that the iconic Art Deco suspension bridge spans 4,200 foot and is open to car, bike, giant converting robots and foot traffic. It states that it comes with the San Francisco bridge, which was the bridge that we saw Optimus in his truck mode next to Bumblebee in the final kind of scene in the movie. The other side of the box has another image of Optimus mainly focusing on his head and part of the chest design looking really awesome. Studio series Voyager class and that he is figure number 38. Speaking of backdrops, Optimus does include the backdrop that we see in the final act of the Bumblebee movie, that being the San Francisco Bridge or the Golden Gate Bridge. As you can see, it looks really awesome and it's definitely the bridge that we saw Bumblebee and Optimus roll out in the final act of the movie. You can, of course, insert the figure for a more dynamic display option. However, if you're going for movie accuracy, you're going to want this figure in his vehicle mode as well as the 1977 Camaro Bumblebee. And here we have the brand new Transformers Bumblebee Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus Prime opened up and as he comes packaged in his robot mode. Now this is actually a fantastic figure into the Studio Series line. This is probably my favourite Optimus Prime that we've got throughout the entirety of the Studio Series line as of thus far. I'm a massive fan of the design and if this is the design that they're going to implement in future movies, I'll be extremely excited to see this design become the iconic leader of the Autobot. The details on this figure as well as the articulation are absolutely fantastic and you can really tell that Hasbro and Takara have tried their utmost best to give us the best representation of Optimus Prime from that Bumblebee movie. Starting off with details because this figure is so detailed as you can see he's got a fantastic head sculpt it really does look like what we see on some of the Cybertron battle scenes. He's of course got his infamous very iconic mouth plate with some silver struts on either side as well as the silver crest painted in the center. The circular panels on the antennas are too picked out in a nice gunmetal silver type of paint and the head sculpt is overall really detailed with the fantastic Autobot blue eyes predominant throughout the sculpt giving this an extremely G1 with a movie verse aesthetic touch to it. As you can see the chest is where I think the details are really impeccable. This entire torso section here is fantastic and it's probably the most detailed piece I've seen on an Optimus Prime figure in this line. As you can see you've got loads of sculpted in detailing with rivets and different mechanisms in there. Really faithful to what we see in the movie. The paint applications that have been applied to it too are absolutely fantastic. I really like that Optimus finally has the front truck windows as the chest which was absent on the Age of Extinction and the Last Night design. This is just such a breath of fresh air compared to that design. We've got the smokestacks on the shoulders which is very reminiscent of the G1 version. Before I forget, there is also some magnificent detail on the back of the figure and it is very accurate to the movie as well when we see Optimus jump from the launch pad onto one of the Seekers. You can actually make out some of these details. However, they are unpainted. There is no denying that the details definitely haven't been skimped out on this release. As you can see, there's also some nice detailing on the back of the arm sections too, so it's really awesome. The arms too are very nicely detailed. You've got this section here, which I'm actually incredibly surprised they've included. And the way that they've utilized the articulation around it, as you can see, it doesn't break up the sculpt whatsoever. And it looks really, really nice. We've also got some nice detailing on the armor sections as well. And moving down to the crutch section, you've got the very G1 yellow lights on the crutch of Optimus, as well as some nice mechanical sculpted in detailing on the sides of the legs. Talking of the legs, I love how they've got the gas canisters actually into the fires. It looks really good, and I love the design choice for Hasbro and Takara to incorporate that. 
Talking of the legs, even in the inside of the legs, no details have been skimmed whatsoever. As you can see, there is some magnificent detailing here and it really does look awesome. I love the color choices that they've used on this figure as well. It really is a great looking piece. As you can see on the shins, there's two, some really nice detailing and some fantastic sculpted in work and paint applications. The feet are fairly basic, as you can see, they are just a blue plastic, but Optimus's feet are definitely not the talking point. As you can see, they do have some nice silver paint applications on the outside with also some fantastic detailing. So overall for detail, I definitely think that this figure is probably one of the best out of the whole Studio Series line. Now, not only is this figure fantastically detailed and very accurate to the movie, but it also has a great range of articulation. Starting off with the head, it is on a ball joint, so it can look up that far and down slightly as well as tilt side to side. It can look left to right, however, it's extremely stiff and I do believe that there is a post in there or maybe like a stump that is hindering it from doing the full 360 degree spin. There is rotation at the arms which go all the way out. These pieces are able to move up and down to accommodate that movement. I initially didn't think he could do the full 360 rotation here. However, if you lift this section up, you do get a full 360 degree rotation at the upper arm, which is just great. There is also a swivel just above the elbow section and also a 90 degree bend at the elbow. The wrists are on swivel joints so they can rotate 360. He also has full range of motion in the waist allowing you to rotate him also 360 degrees. These skirt pieces are able to move out to the sides to accommodate the figure for doing the splits. The legs can also kick forwards that far and back that far. There is also a rotation joint just above the thigh section as well as a more than 90 degree bend at the knee. The feet also have a great range of motion. They are able to be pivoted forwards and backwards, as well as have an ankle rocker joint, allowing you to spray the figure out in an extremely wide stance. Optimus comes with one accessory, that being his infamous Ion Blaster. This too is very reminiscent of the G1 version of Optimus. It has been done in a complete black plastic. However, once again, there is some fantastic molded in detailing here. As you can see, you've got the clip where all the bullets would have been held, as well as the handle. A really nice sculpted in piece. I imagine if you were to apply some silver paint applications, such as dry brushing on this, it definitely would further bring out the details, making this just as detailed as the actual figure himself. In terms of weapon implementation, as you can see, there is a post on the gun, which does just plug into Optimus's arm like that. And this to me really does complete the look and make him look fantastic. I'm so glad they've included this weapon as this was really the only weapon we saw this version of Optimus use in the movie and use it he did. He really had some fantastic scenes in the Bumblebee movie. Despite him not appearing that much, every scene he was in was definitely a crowd pleaser. Now, if you don't wish to store the gun in the arm of Optimus, there are some posts on either side and on the back there is some ports so you can just port it into the back just like that and that is how you store the gun on Optimus's back. For some size comparisons here is the Voyager class Bumblebee Optimus Prime compared to the Bumblebee Deluxe class Bumblebee as well as the 1977 Clunker Bumblebee Camaro. As you can see I think the scale here works really well especially between the new Bumblebee and the new Optimus Prime. I'm a massive fan of the new designs and if this is the way that they are going for the rest of the movies I'll definitely look forward to seeing them on the big screen. I did always love this version of Bumblebee and I did always really like the original trilogy of the Bayverse design however to have a breath of fresh air is definitely great as the franchise was definitely becoming to stagnate slightly. I do think that these look fantastic together especially these two and my only hope now is that we get more Bumblebee figures to go along with these. I'd love some more Cybertronian characters such as RC, Ironhide and Willjack. That really would complete the set of Cybertronian characters. There is also so many more they could do. So with this figure's release, I definitely do think that we will see them. For another size comparison, here is the Transformers Bumblebee Studio Series Optimus Prime next to the brand new Studio Series Constructicon Rampage review coming soon. As you can see, these two figures do scale fairly nicely and are definitely in the Voyager class scale. For a Studio Series Optimus Prime comparison, here is the Bumblebee Optimus Prime compared to the first 2007 movie Optimus Prime. Of course, these are both from the Studio Series, and as you can see, there is definitely a stark difference in design. This one is a lot slimmer and looks more of a complex design, while this one is slightly more simplified and looks a lot more bulky. However, I definitely do think that they both have a place on my shelf, and if this, as I stated, is the design that they're going for Optimus in the new rebooted series, I'm definitely extremely happy with this design. Now turning to the figure's transformation, despite the design looking fairly simplistic to what we're used to, it actually has one of the most involved transformations from any Voyager class in the Studio Series line. To begin with, what you're going to want to do is come to these sections here and just pull them apart there on double hinges. So just sway them out to the sides, just like so. We're then going to come around to the back section and take this and just collapse it down. Turn the figure around and rotate this forearm piece forwards 
just like so. And then take the head section and slide it out and just bring it down just like that. We can then turn around to this side here and lift the arms upwards and bring all of this out just like this. What we can then do is take this whole section here and lift it upwards and then take this whole section here and rotate it all the way around spinning it to the front so that these sections here are now lined up with the grill. What we can then do is take this piece here and collapse it forwards and then come around to this section here, take the head, collapse it in and snap that into place just like that. What you'll then want to do is take these sections here and lift that up and then fold these back and then bring those inwards just like so. You can then now lift this piece up just to allow for some more clearance and launch this all the way back. Now, as you can see on this back section here, there is a slot that this tab here will tab firmly into place. So just snap that in and then take this and tuck it under. It's very reminiscent of the MP10 transformation in regards to the arms. So just launch that back, lift this section up and rotate it forwards and then tab that into place and lift this piece up just to allow for some extra clearance. What you'll then want to do is take these pieces here and just fold them out just like so, and then proceed to collapse this section in upon itself. We can then take these pieces, and as you can see, there is a tab there that will plug into that slot there, and a tab there that will plug into that slot there. Just take these and try and line them up to the best of your ability, and snap those into place as well, and then take this one and repeat the exact same process and tab that into place also. We can then begin to kind of line everything up. So move the arms down slightly just to make everything more symmetrical. Take this piece here and lift this up also, trying to get these silver tabs underneath this section before you plug in the main tab. Clip that in, come to this side here and clip that into place. And then take this, lift this grill section up and collapse this whole piece in upon itself. As you can see, there are some tabs there that will plug into the back of this part. So snap either side of those in, just like so. So now you have essentially completed the front cab section of Optimus. Now we can turn our attention to the legs, which is definitely an extremely interesting part of the transformation. As despite them looking quite simplistic, they do have quite a lot of engineering. So what you're going to want to do is take these pieces here and rotate those forwards just like so. This will then allow us to have clearance to fold out the gas canisters. These do just fold out, which I thought was a great touch of engineering as instead of just leaving them out to the sides, they do slightly collapse. And as you can see, there is some nice mechanical detailing in there. Also, we can then turn our attention to these sections here. And what you're going to want to do here is take this whole piece here and lift it upwards. We can then proceed to collapse this section up and fold it flush against that blue panel. Repeat the same process on this side, fold this section up, rotate this section up, and then snap it along the side. Now obviously these two pieces will plug in together, however you don't want to do that just yet until you've completed the configuration for the legs. What you'll then want to do is go to the underside of the figure. Now these pieces which have some nice mechanical detailing, as you can see there is a peg there that will plug into this slot here. Take these and lift these upwards also and just snap those into place just like so. So definitely a lot of engineering in this figure that upon first glance, you wouldn't necessarily thought existed. Turn the figure around once again. Now turning to the feet sections here, you're going to want to straighten them out just like so. What we can then do is turn them inwards upon themselves. So repeat the same process on this side, straighten them out and then rotate them outwards just like so. We can then proceed to fold out the trailer hitch section. And then this whole section here will rotate all the way inwards and will actually clip in to the side just like so. Repeat the same process on this side to so take this and rotate it all the way in and clip it in just like so. And as you can see, you have exposed some nice mechanical detailing as well as some great paint applications. We can then take this piece here and clip it together just like that and then take the trailer hitch and slide that into the opposite side. Peg this back section in also just like that. Now on the back of here, as you can see, there are some tabs here which will plug into slots on either side. And there are also some ports at the top of here which will plug into the pegs on the top of the smokestacks. So what you're going to want to do is collapse this whole section here, line those up just like so, make sure everything is snapped into place. And there you essentially have the Transformers Bumblebee Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus Prime in his really awesome G1-esque truck mode. And here we have Optimus Prime in his truck mode. 
Now straight away, this is an extremely faithful representation to what we see at the very end of the Bumblebee movie. This is his very G1-esque flat nose truck mode. And I think Hasbro and Takara have done a fantastic job in recreating it in figure form. As you can see, this truck has got fantastic detailing as well as paint applications. The entire grill section is picked out in a really nice silver paint apps with the headlights also picked out in silver paint. We've also got that very classic G1 silver trim going around the truck with the mirrors also picked out in a silver paint application. I really like the translucent blue for the front windows and the side windows are just molded and painted blue. You can also see evidence of window wipers which have too been picked out in a nice silver paint as well as every single rim of this figure also being picked out in silver paint. It really does feel as if though Hasbro and Takara have pumped a lot of money into this figure and it definitely shows in the quality. As you can see he has got some detailing such as the trailer hitch. To me it looks like there are some spring mechanisms which is very faithful to what you would actually see on a truck like this that has a trailer hitch. We can see the smokestacks which are unfortunately not painted in silver however i think that's meant to go with accuracy in the robot mode as i don't believe that these when optimus was on cybertron were in fact silver as you can see this back grille piece has been molded in a gunmetal gray with some nice riveted details so there really is a lot of detail on this figure you've got the gas canisters as well as the steps to get up into the cab section and it just looks like a really nice rendition of optimus the figure does roll extremely smoothly on all of his wheels as you can see trying to push that down a bit he does roll really nicely and these two front ones to me seems as if though they are pinned with the rest being plugged on but they definitely don't feel cheaply made on a very thick and it's just a really nice looking truck mode now in terms of weapon storage for the ion blaster the instructions actually tell you to hook it on to the trailer hitch much like we see with many optimus figures However, to me, I do think that there is some kind of space here for this gun to go in. There is two grooves here, and as you can see on the gun, there are two slots. To me, it looks as if though this should slide in. However, this nozzle section here bumps into this piece, so perhaps you need to angle it and then slide it in. I'm not entirely sure if you would pop pieces apart, so I'm just going to leave it off to the side. But that is definitely an option, and with some finagling, I do reckon you could probably stuff this in there but I do think you'd probably put a lot of pressure on these tab sections here, as well as the tabs on the trailer hitch, causing them to probably stress. For some size comparisons, here is the brand new Transformers Bumblebee Voyager Class Optimus Prime, compared to the 1977 Camaro, as well as the Volkswagen Beetle. As you can see, I think the scale here works reasonably well. It's definitely not accurate to what would be in terms of a real life representation. As you can see, the 1977 Camaro is almost the exact same length as this truck, which isn't accurate, but they definitely do look extremely nice. And if you've seen the movie, you'll know that these two do actually roll out on the bridge, which is a fantastic scene. So it is definitely nice to have an Optimus to complete that iconic look. Comparing him with the Volkswagen Bug, as you can see, this is what G1 fans have wanted all the way back when the first 2007 movie was first released. I think that these two look absolutely great together. I really like the movie's aesthetic in the robot mode and the more traditional generation one look in the vehicle mode. I actually do prefer the look of the Bug compared to the Camaro, surprisingly. It really did grow on me in the movie. And this is definitely a really nice looking truck for Optimus. We saw him retain something similar in Age of Extinction. And ever since then, I have been a massive fan of the flat nose truck. And if this is the look that they're going to go with him for the rebooted series, I definitely am excited to see this truck more and more in the movie. Utilizing the San Francisco bridge backdrop, you can really recreate that kind of last scene that we see these two together in. And I think that this looks fantastic. And it's definitely a great opportunity for photographers of Transformers toys to take some fantastic pictures, as this was definitely a very iconic scene in the Bumblebee movie. So there you have it. That is my review on the brand new Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie. As you can already tell, I'm a massive fan of this figure. It has definitely blown away my expectations and ever since this figure was first announced, I have been highly anticipating its release. The robot mode is fantastic and is extremely faithful to what we see in the movie. I love how the designers have incorporated G1 elements as well as giving it a movie aesthetic. The transformation is, is extremely involved and in order to get it into truck mode, you go for a variety variety of steps which are completely different from previous Voyager Optimus figures. I love the truck mode, once again it is extremely accurate to what we see in the end of the Bumblebee movie and overall this figure is just absolutely fantastic. The articulation and the amount of detail they've pumped into this really does show that Hasbro and Takara really care for this movie and are really doing everything they can to make this toy line really really strong. I hope that you enjoyed this review and if you did please let me know down in the comment section below. As I stated I do have my review on the Voyager class rampage coming extremely soon so please feel free to subscribe to stay tuned for that review. Also, please feel free to leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video and be sure to stay tuned for my next review. Thanks for watching.